store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich in what matters to God. The whole, all the readings are telling us uh, today, you know, what are our priorities? Uh, the first reading, um, you know, is talking about possessions and vanity of vanities, and the second reading is, uh, is telling, is talking more about the things of, of heaven, saying, stop looking on earth and think, think of the things above and stop lying to each other. Um, and Jesus in the gospel is telling us, uh, where's your heart? Uh, where's your treasure? Uh, are you storing up things and uh, in possessions? He says, your life is not possessions. Um, what is it that matters to God? And I think we do have to think of what does matter to God? Do we really take God seriously? Um, today is a sad day for the country, certainly. With, uh, I mean, uh, there were 20 people killed in El Paso, but then there were nine more killed in Dayton, Ohio, uh, shot, to, shot to death. Um, that reminds me of, I lived in Kingston, Jamaica. Somebody said, what was your preparation for coming to St. Anne? Well, I was administrator of a parish in Kingston, Jamaica, where we spent more money. Uh, our budget was funerals, pretty much, paying for the funerals of people who were killed in the neighborhood. Actually, recently there was a, a funeral for uh, the caretaker of that parish. He was recently shot to death because uh, there was... Uh, recently, it probably didn't make the news, we're not aware of it, but in Kingston there was a water shortage, shortage recently. So the priest there had a little school for children and he brought water down from the mountains in you know, big, big containers. Um, and in back of the church is a ghetto and somebody at night found a way of siphoning off the water uh, from these tanks instead of it going into uh, the school, it was going over the wall into, you know, his property. And the priest, the pastor told uh, the, the watchman, the custodian, you know, cut off the pipes and, you know, stop, stop whoever it is who's stealing the water from our, our basic school. So the man did it and in retaliation he was killed. Uh, so it also reminds me of a man in that same parish who uh, he came into church in a wheelchair. He actually said, I'm not Roman Catholic. He was actually Greek Orthodox. I didn't think they were Greek Orthodox Jamaicans, but there are. <laughs> and he came and he had a store in, that, in the area. And uh, these, some gunmen came into his store and said, you need protection. We're going to protect you. And he goes, I don't need your protection, and I'm not paying for your protection. So they shot him up, and he survived the, the you know, the gunman, uh, but he was paralyzed uh, as a result of it. Young man in his early 40s. And he came into our church, and he said, we need this church in our neighborhood. He said, the gunmen certainly are not coming to church. <laughs> if you come to church, you're not going to hear uh, forgive or seek the kingdom of heaven. Uh, he said, we need this church uh, because the gunmen uh, have another agenda. And he said, I'm not leaving my neighborhood because of these people. I'm staying. And I'm, open, I'm opening up a new store down the street. So we need you uh, to preach the gospel and to keep people and try to help people and help this neighborhood uh, to protect it. And, uh, you know, we have to, that's our job. It was, uh, I was talking to Jesse not too long ago. We were talking about the history of this parish. And it's kind of funny because about a hundred years ago, uh, there were, in this parish, or among the Catholics, there were, two, there were two separate masses taking place. One was in English in somebody's house, and the other one was in Arabic in somebody else's house. Is that correct? Yep. Yeah, we, had, we have the Sanders and the, uh, the uh, what, is it, what are they again? Abd and the Abdallahs, right? Uh, the Abdallahs uh, were 
Lebanese Catholics, uh, Maronite Catholics, and they had their visiting priest come in and he'd celebrate Mass in Arabic. And then the Americans would have different priests coming in and they'd stay at your house uh, for maybe a week or a month. God bless them. Can you imagine if, it, if we said, we're not going to build a rectory, we're staying at your house? <laughs> But uh, we still have that struggle. What, you know, the, the, the gunmen in, uh, in El Paso, which is a border town, and usually a pretty peaceful town. It's won awards for being a peaceful place. Uh, the, the man there wanted to kill as many Mexicans as he had. Well, we have a lot of Mexican-Americans in this parish. And of course, that makes them feel very uncomfortable. I have a, and we're, but we have to try to do our part try to do our part as Catholics, Christians, because uh, the gospel isn't always practiced. And maybe we have to take it a little bit more seriously. Uh, I was in a Walmart not too long ago, and I had kind of like an, what they call like an eye stroke. It was, uh, it wasn't from blood pressure, but it was probably caused from cholesterol. And uh, I take cholesterol medication, but this thing kind of occluded my vision temporarily and so the doctor said you know you can't just rely on the cholesterol medication you got to do something you got to exercise you got to stop eating this that and the other thing that are high in cholesterol you got to take that take it a little bit more seriously take it up a notch uh, and I think that's what our Lord is saying to us today yeah we know the gospel we try to seek the things that are above and not the things below. We try to think like Christ, but uh, a lot of times we fall short, or we don't take it that seriously. And maybe it's things like this where you have such hatred and division um, that make us think, I gotta take it up a notch. Uh, what does it mean to, to be a Catholic, to be a Christian? We have a priest, the coming Father Ugo, uh, he's gonna try to do his part. He's an interesting character because He's a passionist priest like me. He was born in Mexico, lived in California. He was undocumented, illegal. And anyway, then one of the passionist superiors took him in. He was a good, he was a, an altar server and he wanted to be a priest, so we took him in and he took his vows. The next superior came in and said, who the heck let you in? You know, uh, that was the craziest thing, you know, to let you in. Anyway, he was, he actually got a voluntary deportation, worked in Mexico for a while. Now he's working in Haiti. And I saw him in New York recently, and he's, he's going to be here today. I said, I thought you were deported. He goes, I was. I said, well, how the heck, what are you, what are you doing here? He said, I got a waiver. <laughs> I got a waiver. So he said, well, so we're going to have a conversation about immigrant, immigration. Do our little part. It's, it, evidently, it's been an issue in this parish for a long time, going back to the, uh, the Arabs, the Lebanese, Lebanese Catholics, and, and the Catholics that came down from, from New England. Uh, but we just pray, uh, pray that we, as we hear our Lord telling us, uh, you know, think the, seek the things above, grow rich in what matters to God, let us just uh, pray that we as a parish uh, and as a church will do that.